right. I'm Louisa Motes, and among other things, I'm the author of the paper called Teaching Reading is Rocket Science that was recently republished by the American Federation of Teachers after um, a 20-year break between the original uh, paper and um, the one titled uh, uh, 2020. And I want to say without equivocation that these statements that have been made about quote, the evidence that tells us about learning to read in support of doing away with Rika are erroneous in many, many respects. If I could be more specific, one of the uh, more alarming uh, statements that I think reveals the um, many misconceptions and misrepresentations of research that are in this um, presentation by uh, those who want to do away with RICA uh, um, are that w w one of the statements is that, quote, phonetic decoding does not work with many words in English. And basically what this uh, document is saying is that those who signed on to it don't believe that the structure of language can be taught or that English orthography and the relationship between speech and print in English can be logically explained to students so that as they learn to read, they can rely on what they know about speech and print in order to read words independently with accuracy, relying on uh, the most important information, which is how print represents speech. All of that can be taught and it involves much more than what is stated here, uh, phonics. And when I refer to the science of reading, as a reading scientist myself and as one of the NIH researchers um, of a major project that was conducted in high poverty schools with uh, almost all uh, African American students and almost all African American teachers, for that matter, uh, was that we could bring all of those high risk kids who started out way behind to the average range in reading by supporting the education of their teachers and providing them with instructional materials that were aligned with the science uh, in, in the professional development. Um, so that information, yes, is measured in large part by RICA. It encompasses not just phonics, but uh, the phonological processes that underlie learning to read, uh, the relationship between speech and print, the structure of words at several levels, including morphology, and the relationship between being able to read words accurately and fluently and comprehension. Another one of the major misconceptions here is that somehow kids who are second language learners of English and or kids with dyslexia and other reading difficulties learn to read in some very different way from the, um, from the way normally progressing kids learn to read. That is wrong. <laughs> what their brains have to do is the same thing but we know a lot about where that processing of language and the relationship between speech and print might break down for students who are challenged by learning to read. We also know that reading is a language-based process and therefore teachers need to know a lot about the structure of language and all of that is specified in the RICA content specifications. Proposing that all we need to do is have prof individual professors create their own standards for d deciding who is licensed to teach reading is outrageously misconceived especially because independent reviews of what is going on in teacher preparation in California are not so very favorable to the content of the courses, many of the courses as they are now, or um, 
the um, uh, alignment between course content as it is now and uh, what teachers actually do need to know as has been established by a very large body of research that has been ongoing for the last three decades, showing that what teachers know uh, is important for what they do in the classroom and what they do has something to do with teacher with student outcomes. Now, while RICA alone and passing RICA doesn't necessarily mean that teachers are going to be successful in the classroom, nevertheless, it's just like a licensing exam in any other profession. Uh, a, a, a doctor who passes a licensing exam has demonstrated that he or she at least has the knowledge base that informs the profession. And then there's more to it, of course, supervised practice, internships, residencies, in which the practical skills have to be developed. But at least having a standardized independent measure gives a kind of uniform benchmark against which teacher preparation uh, ought to be um, evaluating itself. And if the problem is that not enough minority teachers are attracted to the profession, then the answer is not to lower the standard. The answer is to give those teachers a much better foundation with the knowledge and skills they actually need to teach reading to all students. And yes, it goes beyond the basic skills of learning to read the words, of course, and teachers need to know a lot about uh, language uh, as, uh, as um, our um, uh, written text uh, represents it. And we, they need to know a lot about the difference between oral language and written language. And they need to know a lot about how to explain everything from what a sentence is to how a paragraph is organized to how uh, different genres are organized. Now, um, while knowing those things is not alone sufficient to get good results, at least it ensures the public that anyone who's licensed to teach in this profession has at least a grounding in information that is truly aligned with this vast uh, information base that we call the science of reading. So I have to say that I am shocked and appalled that California would once again uh, present arguments that are literally a throwback to 1986 when the state was doing terribly having embraced whole language ideas. And no, it is not true that dyslexic students benefit from a combination of phonics and whole language because whole language is misconceived from the get-go and has no place in the education of dyslexic kids. And that is not uh, equivalent to saying that they need language-based instruction that is explicit and systematic and cumulative at all levels of, of, of language organization. So I am opposed to this uh, from top to bottom.